Olá pessoal, bem-vindos. Estamos aqui novamente para o quarto episódio da websérie O Mundo Empreendedor Expedição Israel. Estaremos aqui toda quinta, uma e meia, com novos episódios, sempre com convidado de peso. Vamos falar sobre inovação, tecnologia e empreendedorismo aqui em Israel, um dos maiores polos tecnológicos do mundo. Eu, como vocês já sabem, sou Daniel Scaba, cofundador e CEO da IBI Tech, que tem como missão a aproximação desse rico ecossistema de inovação de Israel para vocês no público brasileiro. Estou aqui há quase 30 anos respirando, vivenciando inovação e tecnologia desde o meu primeiro dia. Eu sou formado em Engenharia de Computação no Instituto de Tecnologia Tecnion, com quatro prêmios Nobel, inúmeras invenções e o maior formador de lideranças da high-tech israelense. Durante meu serviço militar, eu fiz parte de uma equipe de desenvolvimento de sistemas de defesa para os navios da Marinha de Israel. Eu fui diretor de P&D, Pesquisa e Desenvolvimento, na área de microprocessadores da Intel, aqui em Israel e no Vale do Silício. E agora estou aqui com vocês para a gente mergulhar nesse mundo incrível de inovação e empreendedorismo. E antes de chamar nosso convidado de hoje, eu gostaria de chamar a nossa incrível Bárbara para dar uns recadinhos para a gente. Oi, Bárbara, tudo bem? Oi, Daniel. Oi, Oi pessoal. pessoal. Bom... Vim trazer para vocês os nossos recados de praxe, né? Então, o primeiro deles, se vocês acessarem o nosso manual de bordo aqui no cantinho, vocês vão ter direito a todos os episódios que já aconteceram do nosso quadro e aos próximos também. Além disso, também vai ter acesso ao nosso manual de bordo, que é onde a gente coloca os principais insights dos nossos encontros e também adicionamos alguns materiais extras para vocês que querem aprofundar o conhecimento. E hoje a gente tem falando um pouquinho sobre os artigos Inovação da Simplicidade às Tecnologias Disruptivas e Escalabilidade, o segredo do sucesso nos negócios. Além disso, queria convidar vocês também a seguir a nossa página, se inscrever aqui no nosso YouTube, já deixa o like aqui no vídeo, que com certeza vai ser um conteúdo excelente para passar para vocês. É, e também lembrar vocês do site premiado, que é uma política que a Voito faz para poder é, fazer vocês participarem e ganharem alguns mimos. Então, durante a nossa live, basta você tirar um print da tela, postar no seu stories do Instagram, marcando arroba grupo voito, e colocar alguma frase, um insight, um conteúdo bem legal que você tirou da nossa transmissão. Mas, preparados para o nosso dia de hoje? Vamos com tudo, Daniel. Vamos lá, brigadíssimo, Bárbara. E now, people, I'd like to invite Mr. Jonathan Berger. Jonathan is an industrial engineer from Tel Aviv University here in Israel and has an executive MBA from Kellogg School of Management. He's director of Copia Agri-Food, a very unique VC that invests in outstanding technology developed by the leading research institute here in Israel. And, and that's what we are going to talk today. He's the CEO of the, the Kitchen Hub, a food tech incubator here in Israel. Oi, Jonathan, tudo bem? Como vai você? Tudo joia, Daniel. Muito obrigado. Jonathan, it's a great pleasure to have you today. And Jonathan, let's start with you. What have motivated you to follow the path of disruptive innovation? And why did you choose to follow this path with the Kitchen Hub? <laughs> uh, I, I, I have to admit that uh, not only it excited me when I started, it It excites me every morning when I wake up. You know, I'm, I'm eager to start the day and to get to meet the startups and to innovate because uh, I feel that uh, we are changing uh, every day uh, the food we eat and through the food, the world that we are living in. Um, but the story um, started about seven years ago um, when we realized that The technology in Israel is a very, very big thing. There are many startups and a lot of innovation. Uh, while the food industry at that time was kind of uh, very traditional. The margins were there. The professional, professional profitability was there. And uh, there was no big motivation to uh, innovate. And at that time, we had a, a strategic uh, thinking process. We brought a consulting firm and we realized that uh, the food industry would be challenged in the future. And 
we thought that the innovation in Israel together with the needs of the food industry can make a combination and become some, something that is called food tech. That was a new term at that time. Nobody talked about food tech eight years ago. We thought about tech like there was high tech in Israel, you know, IBM, Google, Facebook, they all have their innovation center in Israel. And we thought, let's take this uh, spirit and culture and bring it to the food industry and make food tech. And the reason was to uh, make sure that the food industry is bring, bringing us, the consumer, better food, healthier food, and more sustainable food that would make less impact on the environment. That's uh, very, very, very interesting. And if I take uh, your, your words about your decision eight years ago to, to go through this path, actually invent this new path of food tech. Now, uh, today we can see uh, many asterisk tech, uh, agri-tech and uh, fintech and consul tech and so on and so on. But how you uh, describe the differential of food tech ventures compared to the these other techs? And how is the impact of the food tech in the Israeli innovation ecosystem? So I think that, um, to be honest, I, I, I think that tech is changing everything. And uh, tech is changing fintech. You know, um, the banking, the online banking is completely different from what we used to uh, see in banking. Insurance is changing uh, and uh, not to mention cyber. Uh, so I think tech is everywhere in our life. Um, what's unique about food tech that, um, you know, food industry is perceived to be a very traditional uh, industry, a very, uh, I would say, uh, difficult to introduce new changes and new technologies. Uh, and as I said before, people were happy, the, the businesses were growing, people were eating more and more, there were more, more and more people in the world, so everybody was uh, uh, less open to innovation. But what happened since a few years ago is that, um, and this is what's unique about it, is that uh, because of social networks, because we all read you know, uh, a Facebook uh, about restaurants, about new products, etc. We all care much more about the food we eat. We are aware of what we are putting into our body. And as consumer, we want the brands to give us more, a healthier, I, I, I said it before, a healthier and better and also transparent. We know, we want to know what's in it, what we are putting in our body, what's on the label. So there was a huge demand to, uh, uh, to innovate. And um, you asked me about the Israel and why in Israel it's so strong. So, so Israel, I think, uh, because of, of the fact that when the country was established, was the state of Israel was established, there was nothing here. And the, the, the pioneers, the people that came here, they, have, they had to face reality. Okay, so for example, a famous invention in Israel is drip irrigation. That means that you can cultivate the land in the desert with uh, watering, obviously, but you water it in a very efficient way through drip irrigation, and that became a symbol of the Israeli technology in agriculture. So basically, the, the mentality here is that we, we look at every barrier and every challenge as an opportunity to invent something, to innovate, and this is why, to date, the uh, ecosystem of the food tech in Israel consists of more than 350 uh, startups. And only in the last year, there were more than $200 million that was invested by foreign investors in the local uh, startups of the food tech in Israel. That's uh, great. And if I, if I see the, the Kitchen Hub, the Kitchen Hub is focused on food tech, but it's also incubator. Can you please explain us what what is the meaning of incubator here in Israel? So, um, you know, we like to call it uh, companies builders rather than incubator. And we measure ourselves. Um, I would give you an example. Let's assume that you have a startup 
that is doing, let's say, a special plant-based uh, uh, cheese. And you are three people, and you, uh, you want to uh, invent this product, and uh, you're going to raise funds. And let's say that you find a friend or even a micro VC, and you got the hundred, the, sorry, the a million dollar investment. Okay, now what? There is so much uh, things to know about how to start a food company, uh, how to um, uh, get the right product market fit, and how to get the regulation, and how to get the scale up in the processing of the product. Remind you, you know, you start with something that you played in the lab, but you want to produce it in a scale, in a mass production, so all the equipment. So there are so many challenges. And I'm not talking about IP and regulation and the uh, business development and planning and all that. So what we did in the kitchen, we developed a manual that takes you as an entrepreneur from A to Z in building your company. And the Z meaning you are successful to bring the company to a stage that is fundable by a follow-on investor. And we measure ourselves, Daniel, according to how much money was invested in our companies in the A round. So we are seed round and we build companies and we bring them to the series A round. Are you familiar with seed and A? I am, but maybe the, our audience less. So please, uh, it, it will, it will so not seed, describe more. So seed, seed money is the first money that the company is getting. And usually the valuation, the value of the company is around 1 million, 2 million. Let's say that the company worth 2 million. And let's say that you get from the investor half a million. That means that you give the investor 25% of the company and you, the entrepreneur, is, get, is, leave, is left with 75% of the company. So these, these are the numbers um, of seed round. And there are seed investors. Those are investors that know how to put $500,000, okay? When you talk about A round, you're talking in companies, and again, it's it different from Israel uh, to, to Silicon Valley, for example, seed round is much more expensive. But let's say in Israel terms. And in Brazil, is less. So uh, in, Israel exactly. is somewhere in the middle, yes. 10 million reais is probably... Uh, and anyway, so... A round, you're talking about a higher valuation, around you know 10 or 15 million, a, a higher check, usually three to five to eight to 10 million dollars, and different investors, investors that are funds, 100 million dollar fund, 200 million dollar fund that for them they write checks of three million each, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So think about a, a company builder. They take three people with basically just an idea, okay, or proof of concept, and work with them uh, all the way to build a company that is eligible to raise funds at a much, much higher valuation. Now you would ask me, how do we do that? Yeah. So we have four parts of this company building capability of ours. So the first part is the space. So we have a space, office space, lab space, that all the entrepreneurs sit together, they help each other. And even during COVID time, we were able to continue to come to the space and work together under the, the, the right protections. And I can tell the audience that this is amazing space because I've been there a few times and this is amazing place. Thank you, thank you. So this is the first component. It's a very important. So you are not, you're not alone in the garage or something like that. You meet other entrepreneurs, you exchange ideas, etc. Now, the second component is the kitchen team. So we have about seven or eight people on the team. And we work with the startups on technology, on finance, on business development, human resources, a, a regulation. The third component is Shrouds Group. So Shrouds is the second largest food company in Israel. 
And I think people know them very well by Três Corações. Uh, Três Corações, exatamente. Yes. Part of the Três Corações no Brazil. And we are helping the startup through bringing all the executives from Strauss to work with the startup. For example, a startup that about three hours ago went public in Tel Aviv. It's called Flying Spark, a startup that is doing insect protein and now it's traded in Tel Aviv Stock Exchange. Flying Spark came to me and they said, Jonathan, I have an important meeting with an investor. Can you help me with building a good business plan to convince the investor? And I said, you know what? I would give you the best. And I called my friend at the finance department of Strauss Group. This is a 2.5 billion US dollars company. And I talked with my friend at the finance department and I said, listen, I need your help to help Flying Spark build the financial plan. Now, this guy is building financial plans for 2.5 billion US dollar company. Okay? So he knows how to make a story, a financial story. And he was working with Flying Spark at no cost for about 20 to 30 hours. Wow. And not only that, in the presentation to the investor, he came to the meeting. And every question the investor asked, the guy knew how to answer because he built this plan. So this is the third support that the startup is getting, the professionals from Strauss Group. And the fourth support, these are the global network that we have in the kitchen, in Strauss. So for example, PepsiCo is partnering with Strauss in North America in Sabra. Tres Corazones in Brazil, Hire in China, Danone, the dairy company in Israel. And all these companies are supporters of the kitchen. They are on our advisory board. So <laughs> when we have a startup that is developing, a, a, for example, better juice, that is developing orange juice, reduced sugar, they work with Brazilian companies and also they work with global companies that we, the kitchen, connected them to because of our network. So again, the space, the kitchen team, the Strauss executives, and the global networks of partners. That's this right. is how we build companies. That's very interesting. So there is one point that you didn't mention is the government, the government support or the government direction in this food tech industries in, in, uh, in general. So actually, I, this isn't a question for you. Do you see the government giving a support direction to the food tech world here in Israel? Um, very much so. So, um, the Israeli government is putting huge amount of money in innovation. They established a group which is called the Israel Innovation Authority. And this group is giving uh, support, financial support, to uh, Israeli-based startup in all areas. And you know, Daniel, if you take the uh, money invested in R&D as a percentage of uh, GDP per capita, okay, gross domestic product per capita, GDP per capita, the uh, invested amount in R&D on a per capita basis is the number one in the world. It's 3.4% of GDP per capita is invested in uh, food tech in a uh, sorry in technology uh, and uh, innovation in Israel. So the Israel Innovation Authority plays a major role. They co-finance the startup with us. So we are giving each startup at the very beginning around eight hundred thousand dollars, and the government is giving major part of this amount just to make sure that the startups are well funded in the very early stage, in the seed stage. So, Jonathan, you mentioned earlier 
some of the challenges of the this big crisis, this pandemic uh, that brought to any sector. Can you tell a little bit how you guys, how you did with these challenges during the pandemic and how the food tech world was impacted by that? Sure. So um, I think that one of the interesting uh, phenomena that happened during the pandemic, consumer connected a animal-based protein with the pandemic. Not all of them, not directly, hmm. but the numbers show that because what happened in China and whatever reason, there was a, a significant re a reduction in the consumption of animal-based protein. So this is steaks from cows, basically, and chicken, etc. And that gave a huge boost to the alternative protein, uh, protein industry. Um, we are very proud uh, to have in the kitchen numerous startups of uh, uh, plant-based meat, cultivated meat, plant-based egg, plant-based uh, dairy product. And that gave our startup a huge boost uh, towards uh, solving the needs of consumers that want to move from an animal-based diet to a plant-based diet. Very, very um, there, there were a few other things that we saw uh, during uh, the pandemic. Um, the other one is a vertical farming. So we do not have in the kitchen hub any company that do vertical farming, but... Oh, please, the, come, to, come to Jonathan. We would love to invest in your company. <laughs> anyway, so this is something that also... Uh, benefited from that because you know with vertical farming you don't have to ship the product in the beginning of the pandemic the logistic was problem so we can just produce the product near near the place you consume them and it's also safe safer um the uh startups that do uh delivery delivery of food delivery of grocery automation of delivery also uh benefited from the still benefiting from the pandemic it's not over yet so there are a few areas that uh, uh, really, uh, uh, I would say, gained interest due to the pandemic. From our perspective, plant-based proteins. Very, very interesting. So, uh, Jonathan, now we got some interesting questions from our, our audience, from uh, Voito students. I would like to address them for you. And first of all, you just mentioned earlier the Flying Spark and congratulations by their uh, IPO. And uh, so could you please tell us some of the most interesting uh, companies from the Kitchen Hub? So, uh, Daniel, you visited us and you know that uh, we have uh, 19 companies, uh, hopefully, Hopefully, uh, in the next month, we would have the number 20. We would make a big celebration. Um, we saw about 820 uh, opportunities uh, to select the best uh, 20. Uh, so it is a lot of uh, work. Uh, I can share with you some of the uh, interesting things. Um, but with your permission, I want to start with something that... Uh, uh, relevant to Brazil. And, you know, uh, we are all concerned about the Amazonia and the, the forest in the Amazonia that are being uh, cut and burned in order to make uh, a land available for soy and corn. So this is a, a very, a, I would say, major threat uh, for climate changing that we take the... the, the, the the forest and then convert them to food for animal. And, and we have two companies that are replacing the animal-based meat. And uh, we are really optimistic, really optimistic. So I cannot share everything that is going on. And they, but the first one is called uh, Aleph Farms. And Aleph is making a cultivated uh, meat. That is a meat that is grown out of the cow. Basically, you take few cells from the cow. Obviously, you are not killing it. You are not hurting it. You just take a, a few cells. You grow them in a lab, and with the right process, 
they become a stake. Obviously, I'm obvi I, I oversimplifying, and it's a much more complicated thing. Uh, but uh, this is what Alefam is doing. And about I guess our, I guess our Brazilian audience uh, might uh, know this name by now because a few weeks ago, just uh, BRF, this huge Brazilian company, announced their partnership with uh, Alefam. Me and, too. <laughs> and, uh, and I can also say that we, we are proud in IBI Tech that we are part of these uh, conversations. So we are very proud as well, and we think that the collaboration between other farms and BRF uh, is not only good for Brazil uh, yeah. consumers, but it's good for the world. And um, we really think that uh, thanks to this technology and thanks to this company that we would eat more and more meat that is not using cows, we would be able to reduce the uh, gas emissions. And you know, Daniel, the, the amazing number is 25% of total gas emissions, this is CO2 and others, are coming from the food industry. Wow. It is more than the gas emissions coming from all the transportation. Okay, food is, is a major contributor to, uh, to the pollution of, of uh, incubator gases and, and global warming. Uh, another interesting uh, company in the kitchen is called Imagine Dairy. And Imagine Dairy is a same, same by different. So same, same, it milks, I mean, uh, we are taking proteins from uh, um, alternative protein in the sense of growing the protein in a biotechnology processes. But this is for uh, to replace milk. Yeah. So the cow that we are not using for other farms to have a steak or beef, now we are also avoiding that cow for milk products. And how, how do they make it? Very similar to uh, the, medicine, the medicine industry. You take an organism, you give it a special code, you program it, and the organism is obtaining a protein that can uh, become later cheese or milk. Uh, and this is a milk protein. It's a, exactly identical to the protein coming from the cow. It's called casein. And once you have the casein, you can add the vitamins and the lipids and the water and you make milk, which is 100% identical to milk, nutrition, etc. You can make cheese and uh, basically every other uh, milk product that you want. So this company is doing that. Um, another company that I personally like a lot, and I bring to my family all the testing from the, from the, from the lab, this company is called uh, Tor Food Tech, and they are making a special bar that is using a, a technology that allows the bar not to contain sugar. Wow. So every other bar that we are eating usually contains sugar to bind the, the ingredients. So, for example, in the U.S., uh, there is Kind Bar. It's a very nice bar in transparent packaging, but it is using sugar to combine the ingredients. So it contains sugar, but it also masks the flavor. So when you give a bite, it's sweet. You don't know exactly what you're eating. Tor Bar as a special technology that press in a very high pressure all the ingredients together into a bar and then you eat it. So all the nutritional values are there and the taste is just great. You feel like you're eating the grape or the nut or the yeah. fig and it's so natural and it's so tasty. So every time that I bring some samples uh, from work to home, in less than two minutes, everybody's just eating everything. So it's really yeah. a great... Uh, and, and um, the last company, which is really an amazing company, and I think you met them, is called Amai Protein. So the story goes like that. In Africa, there is a special flower that has a, a, some a protein that is growing on the flower, completely natural. This protein is 3,000 times sweeter than sugar. And it is used in order to attract the animals to eat it and then something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, 
this protein is manufactured by a my protein and is used in the beverage industry to replace sugar so they are not taking it from the plant because it is a uh, very very rare but just just duplicating the protein in a biotechnology process and provide it to the pepsico of the world to the coca-cola of the world and other large companies to replace the sugars in a, a beverages so these are four interesting companies i like them all they are all gonna go uh, very far you will hear about them uh and we have uh, more coming yeah i am sure and uh, and you know very well that i love uh, the work that you guys doing and you didn't mention zero egg and better juice and and again flying spark that doing a, a amazing ipo just a few weeks ago so uh jonathan i would like to thank you so much so much for being with us inspiring me inspiring the audience and actually bringing a lot of hope and light of the future of the food in the world. Muito, muito, muito obrigado por estar aqui com a gente, Jonathan. Obrigado a você, Daniel. Obrigado, Venti. Muitíssimo Tchau. obrigado. E agora gostaria de convidar novamente a nossa Bárbara e ouvir dela o que, que ela achou dessa incrível conversa com Jonathan. Bárbara, conta o que, que você viu. Nossa, incrível para mim foi pouco, viu, Daniel? Estava anotando aqui e assim... Muitos, mais muitos insights. E eu achei muito interessante também esse, essa última empresa que ele estava comentando, né? Sobre a barra de chocolate sem açúcar. Porque eu sou diabética, então é realmente algo que a gente Uau. observa que existe, sabe? Então é uma necessidade que as pessoas têm, como ele comentou também. É, a gente se preocupa cada vez mais com a saúde, a gente se preocupa mais com o que a gente está ingerindo. Então, a ação da, das food techs é realmente muito importante e esse trabalho também que ele vem desenvolvendo junto da sua companhia e de todos os seus aliados ali, junto da Ibitec também, com certeza é um trabalho que vale muito a pena e o futuro é esse, sabe? É isso. Mas vamos direto ao ponto aqui, trazer alguns insights que eu achei simplesmente sensacionais. É, então, ele falou bastante ainda que o setor alimentício, ele ainda é muito tradicional, né? ele era tradicional, e aí começaram a formulação né, das food techs, como que surgiu isso, e realmente vem transformando esse setor, trazendo de uma forma realmente inovadora, é, por exemplo, utilizando essa questão das proteínas né, de animais e etc., para a gente formular outros tipos de alimentos, isso é simplesmente incrível. É, tem também a questão de que realmente a questão tech, né, ela revoluciona tudo. Então, ele deu o exemplo, por exemplo, da fintech, e aí se a gente parar para ver, Nubank, enfim, várias outras fintechs que a gente conhece que revolucionou o meio ali do mercado de, de bancos e tudo mais, e a forma como a gente também interage com isso hoje é muito mais intensa. É, além disso também, ele trouxe aqueles quatro passozinhos, né, para trazer ali o que, que eles usam para fazer com que as companhias realmente obtenham ali o sucesso, né, a capacidade e tudo mais. E aí ele traz aqueles quatro pontos, que são o espaço, então você realmente ter um lugar ali para dividir, trocar ideias, conversar com outras pessoas, outros empreendedores. A equipe interna deles, então, pessoas de diferentes setores que podem auxiliar de forma geral ali no desenvolvimento das empresas. Ah, o suporte da Strauss, que é uma empresa assim, né, bem grande, quem não conhece, a gente vai deixar o link aqui também para vocês acessarem, mas é uma grande referência. E, por fim, o networking global. Então, imagina você ter acesso também a como empresas em vários outros países e que são referências internacionais fazem, né? É simplesmente incrível. Então, assim, muitos insights incríveis mesmo. Fui anotando aqui no meu caderno, tive que fazer várias rascunhas aqui para poder conseguir anotar tudo. Mas foi uma live simplesmente incrível e eu senti muito essa energia que você falou também. Não, não, realmente é um trabalho incrível, conheço de perto e agora o Brasil todo está conhecendo. Exato. Muito legal também a notícia né, que você trouxe aí sobre a BRF com a Ali Farm. Então, Sim. com certeza, a gente vê aí que o futuro é esse e é muito bom Sim. saber também que vocês fazem parte disso. Sem dúvida nenhuma, maravilha. 
E eu agora queria novamente agradecer o nosso público que nos acompanhou nesse mergulho ao mundo da Foodtech. E, pessoal, na semana que vem vamos ter mais um nome, mais uma live de peso para a gente aqui curtir junto com vocês. Então, pessoal, até lá e a gente se encontra aqui mesmo. Um grande abraço.